Have you ever tried to share an Ableton Live project with someone else and then they get missing media files? Or maybe you try to open a very old project and it doesn't open properly because the files are missing or the plugins aren't working. I want to show you today how you can make sure that every time you share or open an old project, it still works and you can use it properly. I've got a project right here that is just an Ableton Live set. You can see it right here. The only thing in there is a .als file. And all of the samples that this project is referencing are in different places on my computer. It opens fine on my computer because Live knows where to look on my computer. But if I share it with somebody else, the missing media files message will come up. Or if I save this project and then move the files that Live is referencing to other locations, then the missing media files will come up for me because Live won't know where to find those media files. We can find out what's going on within a project by going under File, Manage Files, and opening the File Management System over here. And we can select Manage Project. This tells us what's going on in our project. We get the location of the project on our computer, what the contents are. This just has one live set, no clips, presets, media files, or defects. That's good. There are no missing files, but this project is referencing files from other places besides within the project folder. And again, if we look, there's nothing in here except the ALS file. I've got it over here too, the current project. We see there are no unused files and we'll talk about the packing feature later in the video. I'm gonna click show to see what these 79 files are from other projects and they're all sample files. We can tell Live to collect these files into our current project. So I'm gonna select yes. And there's also one file from a factory pack and that's a Max for Live device. So I'm also gonna collect this into the project. Then we can go down here and select collect and save. Live is now gathering all those samples and saving it into our project. And if we go to our current project, we now see we have samples, we have the presets, we have everything we need within this project folder, and here you see it as well. Now I'm going to go back and just manage this project, and you're going to see that we have two live sets, and it's still referencing these external files. That's because Live created a backup file. This backup file is the old file before we collected everything into the project, and it's referencing those files from another place. We don't need this, so we can delete that. And if I run this again, we will see that now the external files are no longer a problem. They're all within the project. This is great, but there's still a couple things we want to do. For example, I'm using Isotope's Nanoverb Reverb on these drums. Suppose the person I'm sharing this with doesn't have this plugin. Or maybe I open this project five years from now and this version of the plugin is no longer supported by my operating system. I won't be able to hear what this sounds like with the reverb. So in this case, I'm gonna right click and select freeze track. Live is now printing this track to audio. So what we'll notice is now all of our devices are kind of blued out and we can't change any of the parameters, but we can still hear everything as we would expect normally. Live has rendered this to audio and those files are saved within the process under freeze. And that's these little clips in here. Now somebody else that doesn't have this plugin can still hear the track as I intended it to sound. And as well as if I open this years from now and my plugin isn't working, I can still hear it as intended. So now we want to think about saving this project. And we have two options. First, we can create an Ableton Live pack. We just click this button here and Live will ask us where we want to save this pack. I'll save it right to the desktop here. And Live is going to package this thing up and compress it into a .alp file. And it was successfully created, and we can see it on our desktop now. The other option is to right-click and select Compress. And this will create a zip file that we can share with other people. So which one do we want to use? There are advantages to both. For one, the ALP file is Ableton's proprietary compression format, and it makes a much smaller file. This is 249 megabits. The zip file is 393, so it's quite a bit smaller. Even though this is the case, I often wind up sending zip files because I think sometimes the ALP files confuse people. When I double click on this, Live prepares installation and asks me where I want to save this project. I'm gonna select my downloads folder and save it there. And Live is gonna unpack this into my downloads folder. And as I go to this folder, here it is with every single file we need. 
The reason I say this is kind of confusing is because a lot of people expect .alp files to show up under the packs in their places within the browser, but that's not how it works. The packs folder is only for Ableton created content. So the stuff I make won't show up here. It's in the downloads folder and people expect it to be there. It creates a little confusion. So to just avoid that, I often wind up just sending the zip file because when we open the zip file, it shows up right where we expect it. We can see the project and there it is. It's ready to go. To ensure our files are also in our project, we can also go to File, Collect All, and Save, and then we can choose which files we want to collect into our project. Files from elsewhere is anywhere on your computer, files from other project or within Ableton Live projects. We can take files from our user library and files from our factory pack. The safest way is to select yes for all of these. That will ensure that everything the project needs is within that folder. So if anything on your system changes, it will be there. But if you know that you're not gonna change your factory packs or you don't need to copy things from other projects, maybe you'll select these and change them to no. But the safest thing to do is to select all. If I'm working on a really important project, I might also create printed versions of each track. And that's pretty easy to do in live. We can go to export audio video and under render track, we can do all individual tracks. And when we click export here, we select a location. So let's select our project folder here. And Live is going to render each track as a separate audio file. So now each individual track has been rendered, and then a person can use those as they like. They can open them up in any DAW. You just drag them right into any project, and then you have every track processed exactly how you wanted them to sound, and you can begin working on the project here. Now, if you do encounter the dreaded missing media files, you're going to want to know how to find those files and what you can do to restore your project. I've got a video for that right here. Check it out. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.